Okay, great. Um, I didn't even check today how many. I still have six responses and six are still in progress. I've opened it up. Uh, I think I've extended it up until the 14th of November. So you still have time to practice again on, on the same questions. Um, I'm not going to check the, the results of those who submitted. So those who haven't done it, uh, you will uh, actually I'm showing it from my side. Mm -hmm. Let me go to the student view. Because my view is different to your one. So there are actually two assessments. There is one for study unit five, which only has two questions. And then there is one for the online practice assessment. If you haven't done so, you can go and look at them. But this is what we're going to be looking at. And I'm not sure if you do also get the bottom part. And I, probably you're only going to see what you have submitted as yourself, but not the others. Uh, since I am looking at this as a... Um, Oh, I'm looking at the wrong study, at the wrong assessment. Let me go back. This is uh, the first one. Okay. Okay. So I can't, I can't show you the results of the first one. Maybe I need to go back as myself. And. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can see the scores. No, I can't see your scores. So you can go and check your distribution of your scores there when you look at them anyway. So it doesn't allow me to to view your scores because I restricted it because I didn't want to see how many people have submitted or look at how how did you individually compare to one another. So it's of no use to me. But anyway, so to continue where we left off, I have actually, I'm going to stop sharing uh, the online one. I have downloaded it. I was able to to log in, as you can see. And so I'm not going to start from where we left off. Sorry, I'm not going to start from the beginning. So if you were not part of yesterday's sessions, I am sorry about that. You can watch the recording. I will upload it later today. So we're going to start uh, from, from here. That's where we ended up. Uh, sorry, Lizzie. Yes. Before you go ahead, um, sometimes I struggle to log on my desktop, so I am using my cell phone. The reason I was asking you on the WhatsApp it's because I was trying to, to, to check the self-assessment on my mm. cell phone, but it doesn't give me that option. But now I have tried to log onto my desktop. It's it's different from what I was seeing on my cell phone. Yeah, on the cell phone, my Unisa works different to when it's online. Okay. Mm. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So we already did question number, I don't know, because on this one doesn't download the question numbers. So whatever the question was, but we looked at this. And the following question from the assessment uh, follows the same question that we did. So here we want it's the probability question. It's also probability questions. So the question here is asking you to calculate the probability of female or 15 and under. So you will have to go. Remember the 
Uh, do you still remember the values that we created? Uh, let's go there. I don't have them anymore. Did we not finish this one? Remember the values? Yes, the totals. I'm, I'm referring to the totals. The totals that we had. Um, this was three. One, I hope, 0 0.413, and this was 0 0.587. Do you still remember that? And I'm going to just add a column here, and write the total. And this was 0 0.221, and Therefore, it means at the top it's nine, ten, seven. You still remember all the values? I don't have them. I hope it was like that. So now you need to go and calculate the probability of female or under uh, 15 and over, which is this one. Female and under. Remember that is the joint probability there. And then this one will be the probability of female. And this will be the probability, the probability of under. So the equation requires you to find the probability of female plus the probability of under minus the probability of female and over 15 years and over. So you need to quickly calculate that. What will be You have the answer. Not yet, still calculating. Yeah. What have you got? C. C, 0.525. I've got C, five, uh, 0.525. Okay, so let's see how you work it out. Mm hmm. I'm waiting. Sorry, my microphone was on mute. Uh, Probability of female? I've done, uh, sorry, uh, 0 0.304 plus 0 0.109. Oh, please can you close that door? Plus 0.112. Sorry? Sorry, we had uh, no... Uh, Probability no, of no. female is... What point is the value? The probability... The point of one. Uh, point 0.109 and point 0.112. Yes, which is point 0.0221. Correct. Okay. And the probability of 15 and under will be 0.413. Minus the joint probability of female and over. What is the joint probability of female and over? 15 Zero. 
zero point one zero nine. And the answer here, yeah, 0 0.221 plus 0 0.413 minus 0 0.109 gives us. You have to work it out in a different way. 0 0.525. All right. Okay, so you have to add, take those two together. Which is. Which is. Which is. Oh, so you have to take all of that together, all of that together, minus that. Right, okay. Okay, got it, thanks. Okay. Then the next one. Sorry, the um, just mm -hmm. again on, on that previous one. When we say the probability of female, that means we look at the total. We don't need to add the two we just once we have the totals we can use that immediately yes remember with basic probabilities inside the table this is where you find your joint probabilities in your totals that's where you find the probability of the columns and the rows so the this is where you calculate your simple probabilities Yes. So this will be the probability of male this is probability of female regardless of what age they fall under Okay, thank you. Yes, that is why it's very important to, when you get the table like this for the probabilities, to quick to always calculate the totals because then you will save a lot of time instead of adding all of them and trying to figure out how you substitute them into the formula. You can just calculate the total and use the total as your simple probabilities. Thank you. Okay. So the next question is a discrete probability question. Now, with this question of discrete probability, you will notice that here you are not given the probabilities. You are given the X values and you are given the events. These are the events. So what you need to do is to calculate the probabilities. And the probabilities in this instance is none other than your frequency or your relative frequencies, which are your percentages. So what you do is you can calculate the total as well on this column. So you must add all these values add all of them, only the number of families, add all of them together and write the total. Once you have the total, uh, I don't know what the total is. Let's say the total is 20,000. Uh, maybe 20,000 is too high. Let's say it's 5,000. I'm just going to make an example. Let's say the total is 5,000. I'm sorry about this. Let's say the total is 5,000 when you add all of them. Now to calculate the, the probability, you just take for the first one, you will say 27 divided by, and then you will write the answer there. You will take the next one, which is 1422. You will say 1422 divided by 5,000 and write the answer there, like that, like that, until you get all the probabilities. Once you have all the probabilities, what you need to do, because the question is asking, calculate the probability that a family member randomly owns a minimum of one year car. So because it says minimum, so we say the probability that X is less than or equal one. So we want to know if a family owns a minimum of one, they can either own no car or they can own a car because it says a minimum of one car. If they would have <laughs> said the maximum, it would have been a greater than. So they cannot own more than that. So you need to calculate the probability of owning that. But those are the steps. 
first calculate the total, then calculate the probabilities in terms of mm -hmm. every car used, then calculate the actual probability of owning more a minimum of more than um, a minimum of one car. Um, can I ask a question? I don't yes. think I understood the question properly then, because it says owns a minimum of one car. For so for me that means one car or more. So a minimum of one means at least one car or more. Um, oh. You are right. Yes, at least uh, a minimum will say uh, yes. You are right. Yes, that's correct. You are spot on. So it will be a minimum will be more than it at least. Okay, thank you. Because I just I know that um in assignment one I came unstuck with a few questions because I didn't I, I didn't read the wording correctly. Okay, yeah. thank you. Because if it, if, it, if it would have said a minimum of one car, it means you cannot have more than one car. So a minimum it means at one or more. Yes, you are right. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. How are we doing? Do we have the total? Maybe we should do it step by step together so that we don't stay muted for long. Uh, the total I got um, is 6484. The total of um, the, the number of families? Yes. OK. Um, so now, let's calculate the probabilities. Uh, is it not supposed to be six seven? Sorry. Yeah, six four eight seven. Six four eight seven. Six four eight seven. Oh yes, yeah, sorry, six four eight seven. Yes. Sorry, six four eight four is less than twenty seven. Six four eight seven. Yes. Okay. Okay, so now let's calculate the probabilities. 27 divided by 6487. Uh, six, <clears throat> we can leave it to four decimals. Let's leave the answer to four decimals. 27 divided by that gives you 0 0.00416. 4, 
four two. So we leave it. Let's leave it for at four decimals. It's okay. fine, even if we leave it at four decimals. Then one four two two divided by six four eight seven. What do you get? Zero point two one nine two. And then the next one. Zero point four four one six. Zero point one four four one seven. Four four one seven. No, you got zero one four four. Should it not be zero point four four one seven? Yes. Okay. And then the next one. Zero point seven six nine. Zero point two seven six nine. Yes, and the next one. Zero point zero zero four nine nine. Zero point zero Z nine nine. It's zero point zero four nine nine. Yes. Mm -mm. Yeah. Okay, the next one. Zero point zero zero eight two. Okay, so now you need to calculate the probability of more than or equals to one. This you can do it quite uh, two ways. You can either do it by adding all of them, or you can do it by saying it's one minus the probability of X equals to zero. So the answer is going to be B. So the answer would have been 1 minus 0 0.042. 0 0 0 0 which then gives you 0 0.9958. Uh, five eight. So, yes, which is B.
Okay. Any question? Anybody who's still unsure about what we are doing? No, that's fine. Um, but in the feedback, question, I got question B. I mean, I got answer B and it's marked wrong. So when you do, when you do all the questions and then you submit for grading and you get the feedback, it says that B is wrong. I will check that one. Thank you. Uh, I will check that one. I will fix it if it's an issue with the interpretation as well. Okay, so now we move to binomial distribution. Remember, these are the same type of questions you might get in the exam. So they might there will be a mixture. There will be some way they ask you to update. There will be some times where they ask you theory questions. You just need to know those. So in terms of binomial distribution, you know that um, the trials needs to be independent. Uh, sorry, the, yes, the trials needs to be independent. The outcomes, which are the events, needs to be mutually exclusive. And there is always two outcomes. Either it can be a... <clears throat> Uh, a, a success or a failure. And since there are two outcomes, therefore it means the probability of those uh, outcome will be one over two, which is a 50-50 chance that one outcome will happen. Based on what I just said, uh, and, oh, sorry, the last thing that I also need to say is, um, the binomial distribution, we use variable, discrete variables. So it means it's variables that come from a counting process. So based on what I just said, which of the following is not an assumption of a binomial distribution? It must be A. A. It will be A because the outcomes cannot be identical. They have to be different. So, for example, if you have a coin, it cannot have two heads. One must have a head and the other one must have a tail. The other side must be a tail. And that means A is the incorrect. Or A is the correct one in this instance. Now, the second one is asking oh, Poisson distribution, which is also discrete uh, chapter, chapter unit five. They are asking you to find the probability that no telephone calls will pass through the switch board. So what they are asking you to do is to find the probability of X is equals to zero from a Poisson distribution. Remember Poisson? You must go to the table, which is broken down by the values of your lambda, which are your means. You go look for the mean of equals to two, and you go look for x value, which starts from zero, where they both meet. That will be the probability you are looking for. And this is clearly because they said no telephone, so it means x will be equals to zero. And your mean is equals to two, which is your average.
Is the answer D? I won't know. We just need to find out is the answer D. You can also use the formula. Oh, sorry, I forgot about some people might prefer to use a formula to calculate. Remember, you will be calculating the probability that X is equals to zero by using E minus lambda, X, uh, lambda to the power of X, lambda multiplied by lambda to the power of X divided by X factorial. You can use that as well to calculate. So if you look at the formula, uh, not the formula, but the, let's say we use the table. Let's go to the table to help those who don't know how to use the table. So we go to the table, we look for x uh, lambda is two. So we know that our probability, we're looking for the probability that x is equals to zero where the value of lambda is equals to two. So our x is zero and our lambda is two. And that will be the answer that we are looking for. It will be 0, 0,1353. Come back. Sorry. I actually, I had it shared. Why did I go out? Okay, sorry. And the answer will be option number E. And was it the one that you selected as well? No, I chose D, but it was because I looked at number one instead of two. Okay. So those who are calculating manually, so it will still work out the same because you will say e to the power minus two, two to the power of zero divided by zero factorial, which zero, this will be equals to e to the power minus two. And if you go to your calculator and say, Second function e x minus two, and you get zero comma one, one three five three. three. And that's how you will answer the questions. And that will be your poison. Um, oh, maybe I should also repeat this. Uh, remember, what I'm trying to do is also give you a feel in terms of how many number of questions you might get relating to each study unit. As you could see that every time we talk about in everything, I also mention the study unit so that you know that it also follows your, your exam also follows the structure of your study unit. So you'll move from study unit one, two, three, four, five, and there will be at least two questions per each study unit. And with the exceptions of some of them where they have multiple sections that they might ask three question and this is one of those where you will be asked the question on discrete by, by binomial and poison and remember with the binomial as well you might be asked the question to calculate the probability not just a theoretical question like that one also with the poison they might be asking you um, to calculate other things other than the probability or they might be even asking you to calculate the mean the standard deviation and the variance so you just need to be aware of all the scenarios. And when we do lots of exercises, they will give you more chance to look at the type of questions they really ask in the exam as well. So that will be a discrete probability, which is study unit five. 
Now can I ask a question? Yes. Sorry, can I ask a question on the previous question? So here it says the mean is equal to two per minute. Yes. But it, the question asked two consecutive minutes, which would mean the mean would be equal to four in two minutes. Yeah. So what I did. No. Because uh, it said two consecutive minutes. So that says the mean is equal to two per minute, which is one minute. But here they're asking for two consecutive minutes, which is two minutes in a row. Yeah, and I think yes. that confused me. Yeah. So um, the other thing is when you read the question, don't overthink most of the things that you read in the question. Identify immediately what you are given in the question. Because at the moment, that two consecutive minutes is not your average. You must remember that. That just tells you that there will be no telephone in those two minutes that will pass uh, for every two minutes that will come and go. But that is not the average of this distribution. The average of the Poisson distribution is two minutes. So, for example, uh, uh, the, the, when they observed this maybe let's say they observed this for the whole day ne? okay uh, every after every minute or every two minutes there might be three phone calls one phone call two phone calls but this is every two minutes when they calculate the average they will take the average over the period of that time not only looking at what happened now and what happened after this but for the whole process for example, let's let's go back to the binomial. As you can see with the binomial, so let's say this was observed for five days or for one day, but for a period of time. So let's say it's for the calendar month. They might say in a day or in a calendar month, how many families had a, a no car, one car, two cars, three cars, four cars. So this is over a period of time. It's not only based on one snapshot of a time. It might be observed over a period of time. That is why they are able to see how many pair each uh, scenario. The same way will happen with the binomial. Read the, the question carefully. So, and the, where, and the statement where it says the probability that no telephone, the last bit of it, it will confuse you, but it should not because they are not saying on average two consecutive minutes. No, they are just saying for two consecutive minutes that will happen. So if they look at two minutes now, two minutes, two minutes after that, but that does not tell you the average. And for Poisson, you need to be calculating, uh, you need to be using the average to calculate, not just the actual value, but the average. Okay. I hope it makes sense. Yes, it does. Does, yeah, because, okay, so we need to focus on, on the information that's given in the first part of the question. Yes. Okay, <laughs> thank you. But I, um, I'm not sure if you did attend yesterday's session when we were looking at the Facebook. There was a question where some way it was asking about the ghost and no ghost. I'm not sure. No, I'm thinking of another class. Go, Facebook ghost and non-ghost, where we were looking also at the probability of success and probability of um, failure. So for example, in the question, they might say that, uh, what will be the probability of no ghost? And that, uh, or they might say the probability that there was no ghost uh, account created is this. The minute they mention that, it's not up to you to decide whether this is a failure or this is a success. As long as they mention that right. so the binomial distribution, and pro, um, the probability of no ghost is 80%. Immediately, that will be your probability of success. Regardless of is the, 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 the weakest one or the strongest one, it doesn't matter. They will give you the probability of success. And then you can calculate the probability of failure, which will be the opposite of what they have given you in the statement. Um, maybe we will get those kind of questions later on when we do more exercises. You will see what I am referring to. But you just need to make sure that you know 
you identify what you are given based on the chapter that you are at at that point. Okay, all right. Thank you so much for that explanation. Thank you. Okay. Now we move into the normal distribution. So the other thing you will notice that you are in the normal distribution, they will, uh, they will tell you, sometimes they will tell you that things are normally distributed with the mean of 65 and the standard deviation of 12. Ready? You must know that this is the mean and this is your standard deviation of 12. The question is asking you approximately what percentage of students have below 50? So what they're asking you is what percentage? That's the other thing. Do not get uh, confused with how do I calculate this percentage? Same way, it's your probability multiply by 100. Remember the probability, we always represent them as decimals. But if we, we want, we can also call them percentages if we multiply them with 100, or we can call them proportions. They can interchange this way. So what proportion of students have below 50? Or what percentage of students have 50? They mean almost one and the same thing. It's still the probability that you need to calculate. So this that will give you will be your x. Remember, since it's normal distribution, we use the z-score, which is your x value, which always given in the question, minus the mean, which will be given in the statement, divide by your standard deviation, which will be given in the statement as well. So what you need to be doing is to calculate this probability. Once you've calculated this probability, then you're going to find the answer of that probability. The probability of Z equals whatever the value will be zero point some number from the table. Remember here you will be calculating the O. Oh, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm moving too fast. So the first step you do is to calculate the Z score. So you will calculate the Z value and find the Z and take your Z and go find the probability on the table. Remember that. Remember the following as well. The sign matters. The sign here says below. Remember, the probability of Z less than A value is the value we find on the table. The probability of Z greater than A value will be one minus the value you find on the table. The probability of Z lying between two values, A and B, this will be the probability of Z less than, less than B minus the probability of Z less than A. And the values you find on the table, you subtract from one another. Remember all those steps. So once you find the value on the table, you're going to take that value and multiply it by 100 in order for you to find the percentage. Okay, let me repeat. The question is asking you to find the probability of a value below 50. You will first calculate your Z value, which is everything that is inside the bracket. So if I look at the sign, it says the less than. So therefore, we need to be finding the Z less than that value. By using the Z score formula, the X is in the question. The mean and the standard deviation are from the statement. You find the value of Z based on the sign you see, you do what is appropriate on the table. If it's Z less than A, the value you find on the table, you're going to multiply by 100 to get the proportion, uh, the percentage or the proportion. Okay.
Okay, maybe we should also do it together so that we don't stay silent for long. How do we substitute the values? Our x is 50, is 50. minus our mean. We already 65. identified all this. 65. 65 divided by our standard deviation. 12. 12. 12. And what will be the answer you get? Negative 1.25. Sorry? Negative 1.25. Negative 1.25. And remember, because we go into the table, since we go into the table, we always need to leave our value at two decimals. So let's go to the table. It's in the negative side of the table. So we go to table. E2 and negative 1,25. So we're looking for minus 1,25. So minus 1, we will find it on the side. And minus 1.2, we'll find it on the side. So yeah, we should be looking for 1, minus 1.2. And at the top, we're looking for 0, 0,05. Did you locate it? Oh, sorry. Did you locate it? Yes. Okay. So how we locate it? We go find 1.2. And this is 5. So that is the answer we find. It's 0 0.1056. So we go. We went and found the probability, which is equals to 0, 0,1056. We need to take this and multiply that by 100 because it is less than. Remember that for a less than value, the value we find on the table, we use that. So multiply that by 100. And the answer will be 10.56. 10 10 10.56%, but we want it as a, a whole number. As a whole number, as an integer, a whole number. So round it off to an integer. The answer will be 11%. One. Any question? Anyone who is still lost? So if there is nobody who is lost, then we move again to the normal distribution again. Now, with the next question, they're actually asking you, if the distribution of the large group of high school students is normally distributed with the mean of 55 and the standard deviation of 5, which one of the following statements is true? Now, they want you to go through each and every statement and check if they are true. Important part. Are those so you need to use z x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation the standard deviation they provided it to you the mean they gave it to you your x values are all these values here the sign are in front of every value there you need to calculate each and every one of them and then once you have the Z value, you must go to the table to go find the probability 
and multiply that probability by 100, like we did with the previous one. So we're going to start with number one. I'm going to use the top part. I'm going to, we're going to start with that one. So what is our Z? Over. The over will be, is it greater than or greater than or equal? Okay. Greater than? Over will be greater than. So let's substitute the values. Your X is 60. 60. It will always be in the question. Your standard deviation and your mean. So your mean is 55. Your standard deviation is five. So calculate the Z value. So 60 minus 55 is five divided by five is one. Let's go to the table. We come to the table. We have to go to the positive side of the table. We're looking for 1,00. zero. zero. Did you find it? Point eight four one three. It's point eight four one three. Now, the sign we said it's greater than. So, our probability of z greater than one comma zero zero. We know that it is one minus the value we find on the table, and the value we found on the table was zero comma eight four one three. So what is this probability? Point one five eight seven. If we multiply this by a hundred, do we get sixteen? Yes. And it means A is the correct one. What we can do for the rest of them. So let's say we do 445. So the only thing there what changes on what we just did for 45, we just replace this by 45. And we calculate. And the sign as well will change because it says it's below. So the sign will be less than. And all these values as well, they will. Okay, so calculate, because everything stays the same, it's just only the sign and the 45. What do we get? So do you want the, the probability of minus two? No, what is the answer for 45 minus 55 divided by five? Minus two will be minus 2.00. 0. So you go to the table. We go to the negative side of the table. And we look for minus 2.0. 0, and that will be the answer 0.0. 0. 0. 0.0228. You go here, you say your probability of Z less than minus 2.00 0 is equals to 0 0.0228. Multiply that by 100, and the answer will be 0.28. Two point two eight or two point three, which is not the same. And you can do for the rest of them and see if you know how to answer them. But I'm just going to leave it at that. 
Okay. Oh, and that was the end of it. The last question was, did you find the exam difficult? Did you find this exercise difficult or manageable? Those who took it, because this is the last question. I think it might be easier than the exam. <laughs> what if I say this was your exam? <laughs> then I've got a problem. <laughs> it's too early to tell. Too early. It's too early, too early. So with time, one, when we, we do lots of exercises like this, then with time you might feel comfortable and um, and then you will take one ex one pre-exam sort of test for yourself to see if you will be able to manage it on time because I will create one for you, a timed one for two hours where you just make sure that you, you, you make time for yourself to sit for two hours, take that exam and make sure that you complete it within two hours. And then you will look at your results because I will make sure that your results are published as well for you to be able to see how you did. And with the answers as well, Soma, like I've been doing for the other, for this exercise, uh, assessment, practice assessment. Um, yeah. And actually, this concludes today's session. We are so early. Uh, it only took us an hour. That's good. But next, uh, next week it might take us longer because we will be doing those complex, uh, the ones that you identified as difficult uh, chapters from your feedback. Uh, I will publish the exam later today or tomorrow morning so that you have the whole week to work on them. Uh, those who haven't done this exercise on their own, you can, you can go back and start looking at it again on your own. Uh, without looking at what we did to see if you still remember how to answer some of the question, just to refresh your mind and memory. Otherwise, thank you guys for coming through. Uh, we'll see you on Friday. Enjoy the rest of the week. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, uh, ma'am, can I ask a question? Yes, you can ask. Would we 